What is going on, everybody? Uh, I'm this week's video. I am super excited. I want you guys to stop using the contrast slider in Lightroom and Photoshop, whatever you're using, and stop using the contrast slider completely and use the technique I'm going to show you in this video today. Uh, this technique is really awesome because it allows you to bypass the contrast slider, the highlights, the shadows, the lights, and the darks. Um, and it allows you to bypass all those sliders and do them all a little bit more custom way to allow you to have the ultimate control over your images. Um, as you may know by now, um, the more control you have over your images, the better they're going to look, the happier you're going to be with them. It's just going to be so much better. So stop using the contrast slider. Start using what I'm going to show you in today's video. Let's get going, guys. Let's jump right in. All right, so we want to stop using the contrast slider, but obviously if you're shooting in RAW, your images are very flat. You need contrast, so how are we going to add it? We're going to use the tone curve right here, one of my favorite tools in Lightroom. It's something that I've been using a lot more lately. It's just making my images look so much better than the contrast slider. So when you add contrast, essentially what it's doing is it is darkening the darks and lightening the lights um, equally to add contrast. That's what contrast is. It's a difference in one thing versus another. So it's making the brights brighter and the darks darker. Now this is all right, but the problem is that you don't really have much control. It's decreasing the darks as much as it's increasing the lights. So instead of using that contrast slider, the first thing that I've liked to do in Lightroom lately is to go down to this tone curve here and make some adjustments that way. So what we're going to do first is actually bring up the highlights and you can see we can just pop that really bright spot on the rock um, and make it really look like there's sun hitting. And I'll show you with the contrast slider again, when you increase this, it doesn't have as nice of a look as it does when you use the tone curve. You can see we've just brightened those really bright spots. We can also come in and increase the lights. Um, bring those up a little bit and then we can go down into the darks and the shadows now the shadows are going to be the darkest of the dark and the darks are going to be kind of the mid dark area so i'm able to dial this in to make the image look exactly how it looked in the field this is going to allow me to have a lot more realistic looking image by doing it this way and i can just click and drag multiple points you can see i toggle that before and after. Now, if you wanted to increase the um, thresholds for the shadows, the darks, the lights, or the highlights, you can grab these as well and play with that. Um, so that can be kind of an interesting thing to do is to just play with each of these things. And that is looking pretty good to me. Let's toggle this looking so much better than it did before. So now we've got a few other options here. You can uh, tone the different channels, the reds, the greens, or the blues um, through these options. However, I generally don't recommend this. Uh, if you're gonna do something like this where maybe you want to cool down the shadows or warm up the highlights, I recommend doing that in color grading. I have another video that covers color grading that I will put up right here that you can click. Um, so you can check that out if you're interested in doing something like that. But this tone curve is really, really fun to use. You can even use this tool right here, um, which says that it allows you to adjust the tone curve by dragging in the photo. So let's click that. Now we can go up here and you can see when I hover over pixels, I've got my little uh, circle here that's gonna move across my bar. And that circle is just telling me essentially where the lightness value of the pixel I'm hovering over um, stands on the graph. So you can see when I hover over some dark areas down here, it's further uh, to the left. Whereas if I hover over some of the brighter areas, it's higher up. So you can actually come in here and just bring up certain areas, just bring down certain areas to make the image look exactly like what you used. Um, <clears throat> to make the image look exactly like what it looked like in the field. So that's how I go about using the tone curve on this image. You can see it's already looking really, really, really nice. Um, I mean, we can go up and make some more adjustments here, but I can honestly bypass most of these adjustments. Uh, obviously the texture, the clarity, the dehaze, um, and the vibrance and saturation, I'm not doing much to, but I'm essentially doing contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks all in one go here. So I don't have to mess with this too terribly much. You can see we've got before and we've got after. We've got before and we've got after. Let's try this on one more image just to show a little example here. So on this particular image, you can see that if we drag the contrast, it really makes that right side of the frame dark. I don't really like what that's doing. So of course, I'm going to use the tone curve instead. Now let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. Uh, before I just dragged on the bar here, or I use this image adjustment tool to adjust it as I clicked on the image, let's try adjusting it with these sliders down here. So I'm gonna bring up the highlights maybe, 
And you can see that these are the highlights that I'm affecting, are these just these ones on the left. If I wanted to select more of the highlights, maybe I would bring this slightly to the left and get a little bit more of a selection where now I'm selecting some of the brighter spots through here as well. So you can kind of adjust this as you see fit. I'm liking where that's going. You can also bring the lights up. Maybe I'd actually bring the highlights down a little bit. And let's bring our lights up. Maybe we'll bring the darks up a little bit. Actually, let's bring the darks up and the shadows down. Just kind of balance the image here. Bring the lights back down a little bit and we'll toggle this now. So you can see I've made a ton of great changes really quickly here by just adjusting these particular things. Um, we could get less of a selection of the darks if we bring this over as well. So tons of different cool things you can do here with this tone curve. I really love using it um, for adjusting the contrast and I've kind of been shying away from using these uh, top six sliders here because I've just been using the tone curve to adjust my images. Um, this is a great thing to use if you also wanna get into Photoshop in the future because there is similar tools in Photoshop, um, particularly the curves adjustment that works just like it. So this is the tool that I've been using for a lot of my adjustments. Highly recommend you check it out. Stop using that contrast slider. You're gonna get so much more control doing this. And when you have more control over your image, the images are gonna look better. You're gonna like them more. You're gonna feel so much better at the end of the day. Try this out, guys. Uh, you will not regret it. That is a wrap. Really hope this video helped you guys out. I hope that you guys will consider trying this out. Stop using the contrast slider. Use the tone curve instead. Uh, it's one of my favorite techniques that I've been using a lot lately. So give this a go uh, in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you try it out, if you have any questions, anything like that, please let me know in the comments. As always, really appreciate it if you like and subscribe. We will see you guys next weekend. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.